Heartbreak in the Garden, Jalen Brunson's game winner rims out at the last possible second after Josh Hart, I guess, tapped Kobe White on the butt trying to block his shot. A foul that leads to three free throw attempts and a loss for the Knicks after a valiant comeback that probably shouldn't have had to happen in the first place. They just really mailed it in for about the first three quarters. But Carl Anthony Towns went for 46, and there's still some stuff to get excited about out of this game, even with the heartbreak. Right now, Unlocked on Knicks. You are Locked on Knicks, your daily New York Knicks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome in to Locked On Knicks. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start this season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. If you win your first $5 bet, visit FanDuel.com to get started. And wanted to remind you guys real quick that your favorite podcast now has a newsletter. The Locked On Knicks newsletter is here every day for you guys. One stop for ultimate team and league coverage delivered right to your inbox. Sign up for free now at LockedOnDaily.com. That's LockedOnDaily.com. And start your day with the all-new free Locked On Knicks newsletter. And I want to thank you guys for making us your first listen today. And every day, whether you're checking us out on your favorite podcast platform or taking everything in on YouTube, we appreciate you making this part of your daily routine. Make sure to hit that auto download function or the notification bell on YouTube so you never miss an episode. I'm Alex Wolf. I'm editor in chief of Nick's site, The Strickland, and he is Gavin Shaw, your favorite play by play broadcaster, favorite play by play broadcaster. And today we are unfortunately, Gavin, breaking down a really annoying loss. I, uh, I really let myself believe with this one. You know, the Knicks, they went down by over 20 points in the third quarter. It was pretty inexcusable. You were ready to just kind of write this one off as like, well, there's the first back-to-back of the season. I guess these guys weren't quite ready for this one yet. And then they storm back. I mean, the Garden crowd, I got to give them props where it's due. I, I thought that that was honestly one of the biggest game changers in this game. Like, the crowd, the second that the tide turned, even when the Knicks were still down like 15, Crowd got rowdy. It got in the Bulls' head. They clearly, you know, were then just making mistakes left and right. The Knicks were capitalizing. As Clyde said a million times throughout the game, like, they just can't hit two shots in a row, Mike. And that was the truth for about the first, like, two and a half quarters of this game until suddenly they go on a 13-0 run. Things start to look good. They pull ahead late in this game and then just can't quite hold on to the lead. They're up by two going into the final moments. Kobe White goes up for three. Josh Hart contests from behind, which is never really a great idea, but I respect the effort for at least going for the block, I guess. He went up pretty clean, in my opinion. Maybe made some incidental contact with Kobe White's butt. Uh, Definitely did not make contact with his arm. You could see that his hand swiped his hair, which is not a foul. You know, you're not... It's it's not someone else's problem with your hair if your hair sticks up a foot and a half off the top of your head. Um, And so then... Kobe White falls down, foul call, three free throws. Bulls go up by one. Jalen Brunson gets it with three seconds to go on the other side, takes a shot, rims in and out. It was, I don't even want to say halfway down. It was like three quarters of the way down. I'm surprised the net didn't swish for how far down it was and then suddenly finds a way to pop out. Apropos for a game where the first two attempted shots were both toilet bowls that went around and around and around and out for both teams. This is how the game ends. Not very kind rims in the garden today and just a really tough game overall for the Knicks. Tough pill to swallow. Yeah, look, I, I think this this was a basketball God's loss for the Knicks, right? Like, I, I don't I don't think the Knicks particularly deserved to win this game. Um, their first back to back of the year, like clearly dead legs to some extent in the first half, but also just like a distinct lack of respect for the Bulls. And if you want to come on here and, and tell me the Bulls don't deserve respect. I'm all for it. Uh, like sad franchise, sad position. Um, it's nice to be able to say that about another um, historic uh, big city that's underachieving, and not not the Knicks. So that that that's fun. Um, but the, like the Knicks defense was horrible in this game. Gave up 26 fast break points for context. Like the Raptors lead the NBA in fast break points per game at 20. So that that is inexcusable. And just over and over again, just like not finding the right guy. Like in in, in the first half. They were doing that a ton and like giving up easy stuff. And then down the stretch of this game, it felt like every time the Knicks, generally Carl Anthony Towns, who was incredible on the offensive end with 46 points and just like 
generally seemed like he could score either a two or a three whenever he wanted in the second half. Felt like every time he made a big play outside of that, um, what was it, a 18 0 run in the third, maybe even a little bit more than that when it was all a 17 0 run in the third. Um, like it just felt like Chicago came back and got a bucket. Like Towns hit a huge three to make it 105 104, and immediately they let um, uh, Io DeSumo go coast to coast for a layup. You didn't even see exactly how it happened because the MSG cameras cut in late, but then Towns had another driving layup to cut it to 116 115. Um, the Knicks were back on defense. Like they had three guys back and the Bulls only had three guys up, but Jalen Brunson, I believe he was supposed to be guarding Kobe White and said he's running down the middle with Josh Hart. Two two Knicks on one guy, Kobe White wide open. He hits the three. And that was the theme. Like the Knicks like left the Bulls open. They didn't really make them feel them defensively in the first half, which is why it was such a vibe change when campaign came in. And, and that second unit brought so much energy. It was Deuce, Payne, McHale, Hart, Cat. Um, that like guided that run and like Tibbs let them like stay in for the bulk of the fourth quarter before Brunson came back and played a lot better. But like, I, I think this could be summed up as like the Knicks didn't take Chicago seriously because they thought they could score whatever they want and come back whenever they want. And they were like, to your point, like one stupid foul and one in and out away from being right about that. They had 63 points with five minutes and 20 seconds left in the third. They scored 60 points in the final 18 minutes and 20 seconds of this game. They could score whenever they wanted against this team. They just had to give a crap on defense for more than a quarter, and they couldn't do that, so they lost. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I I was ready to say, you know, if they had pulled this one off, I was, I was sitting there, I was gearing up, I was starting to mentally prepare for this pod and, you know, how I would react and everything. And, you know, you, you said yesterday, like, oh, like this, this, win I think was like the win of the young season the the you know the game against the Sixers like that and I agree with you I that definitely felt like the win of the season but I was ready to like rechristen this one like no I think this is the win of the season like these are the sort of wins that add up in the end you know when you just gut it out like you you don't start the game well but you just in the end assert your dominance and prove that you're the better team and close one out and the Knicks in the past have been really good about that you know last year and and the year prior, like in the Jalen Brunson era, it's been sort of a staple of theirs. Like to, I mean, it's sort of an unfortunate staple, but I think it happens to all good teams where, you know, some nights you just don't totally have it. And yet eventually you just prove by the end, like it doesn't matter if we're only firing on 60% today, you know, like that, that's good enough to get by you bad team. Like that's fine, you know? And it was almost that in this game, but they just couldn't quite, put it all together. Um, and yeah, I mean, to your point, it, it comes back to bite you sometimes when you don't take things seriously early in the game. And, you know, I think part of it was dead legs too, you know, first back to back of the year. So of course you're going it, to, it, it's going to be tough. You know, it's tough. It's a tough part of the NBA season dealing with back to backs. And, you know, at least, <laughs> at least the Knicks aren't doing what the team that they beat last night is doing and resting, you know, the two most important players in their starting lineup. So, you know, they had a puncher's chance, but they just came out looking dead legged, generally disinterested. I mean, they let uh, like Josh Hart in particular, who played so well down the stretch, other than whatever you want to say about the foul. Uh, you know, I thought that he was such a key part of that, that run, you know, both with that bench unit that did so well. And then once Brunson came back in and everything, like I thought that he was fantastic, but early on in this game, I thought, you know, it was kind of letting Buzelis get going a little bit. And like, he didn't, end up with a huge scoring line, but it just seemed like, you know, like he committed a dumb foul on him and like, let him get one bucket. And it was just like, you know, little stuff like that. Like, why are you, why are you not taking this seriously? Like just shut the rookie down, you know, whatever. Like it just, it was little stuff like that, that kind of got on my nerves a little bit with the early part of this game. And then, you know, then you see that that sometimes pays off for some of these guys down the stretch. And, you know, a guy like Desumu is then, feeling it towards the end of the game and feels like he could just run right down the court and, and stick a, you know, three or a layup or whatever, right in your face. And you're not going to do anything about it. And, you know, even once the Knicks were all geared up, then it's tough to compete against that sort of energy. Um, it also didn't help that like Zach Levine decided in the second quarter to just go yeah. like full all-star scorer God mode too. And even with that, I felt like they were starting to kind of get their stuff together a little bit at the end of the second quarter. And then it was just like, well, uh, it doesn't really matter if you're going to defend me well. I'm just going to pull up five feet beyond the three-point line and hit like two threes that there's nothing you could do about. And, you know, sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles. But, yeah, annoying. You know, hopefully this isn't one of those ones that we look back on, you know, in game 78 and be like, crap, like now they're out of contention for the third seed or whatever, second seed or 
whatever the case may be, but uh, we'll see what ends up happening. I mean, it, the one luxury I'll say the Knicks have been granted at this particular moment is that the whole Eastern Conference, other than the one team at the top, has been pretty slow to start this season. Uh, other, okay, I guess the two teams at the top, Cleveland yeah. and then Boston, still looking pretty good too. But every other team is basically in the same boat of like right around 500. So, yeah, Knicks are fourth in the East right now for context, even after this loss. Exactly. So, one game under 500, they're fourth in the East right now. I mean, it's, it's, it's dire straits right now in the conference. So, I, I think that they've got plenty of time and opportunity to right the ship and get themselves back in that top three seed territory again, like very soon. Um, and possibly higher if they go on like a really big run. It's just, you know, you can't, you can't take any team lightly in the NBA and they kind of made that mistake today, short rest or not. Yeah, I think, I, I, I think you nailed that. Um, the, the Knicks just, they haven't earned it yet, right? They are not the Boston Celtics. They're not coming off a championship. Like, the core of this team has not gotten out of the second round. OG Ananobi, he won won a championship when when he was injured with the Raptors. Carl Anthony Towns made the Western Conference Finals last year and lost in five. Like like you you, you haven't earned the right to just take a night off, especially against the Bulls. And what was a winnable game, right? Like we were like we were talking about in our you you were talking about in our YouTube comment section today. Like when we we were talking about it all preseason. The Knicks have got through one of the toughest stretches of their schedule. Five and five, which is like, like I haven't been happy about it. I've been vocal about that. But at the same time, like, like to your point, like in the East, it hasn't really set them back outside of if you want them to get a top two seed, it set them back a little bit. But it hasn't really set them back. And considering that this whole team is new, like they're they're without their two best defensive bigs, obviously, and Precious at you and Mitchell Robinson, like five and five was just fine. But the thing the Knicks have to do now is feast against this super easy schedule. That's how they got the two seed despite all the injury issues they had last year, it's because what did they win their first 16 games, 17 of their first 18 against teams under 500. That's what they did. And, and, and to your point, like they, they just like avoided making enough mistakes to win those games. And, and tonight they didn't because they like, they just weren't serious enough. Like early in this game, like even with the dead legs, like we, like we saw, like, I, I don't think the Knicks like magically got more energy in the third quarter. I think they were down and I think campaign came in and campaign played like he had something to prove and like his hair was on fire. And maybe some of it is that, all these guys have been playing 40 plus minutes, except for someone like campaign, but he was great. And then I looked to someone like Carl Anthony towns. Like we'll talk about him more in, in a sec, but no energy issues with him. Like, like his motor has been fantastic. Like for all the talk about his shooting. And that is very obviously a massive difference between him and Julius Randall. The single biggest difference is that cat plays his freaking butt off every single night on the offensive end. And defensively, he's mostly trying to um, for guys like Brunson for Hart for stretches for OG for stretches for Mikhail for stretches. There, there's just, no excuse for not like like if you're short on some jumpers, fine. But like bring that signature Knicks effort because that's what separates us from pretty much every other team in the NBA. So it was missing tonight. They didn't win the game. That's okay. Carl Anthony Towns is amazing. We will talk about it next here on Locked On Knicks. But first, we want to tell you about our good friends over at FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports movies. Right now, new customers can bet $5, get 150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, do live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com. To join today, you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That is an incredible offer on FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, guys, we are back here on Locked On Knicks. Uh, the one clear-cut, inarguable, shining light in this game uh, was Carl Anthony Towns, 46 points, 10 rebounds, Three assists, three steals. Alex, we were super concerned about the the three point rate. I'm I'm looking it up right now. But what was it? His first three games of the season, he took a total of six threes. He he took double that tonight. He took 12 threes, shot six at 12 from distance. Um, it's clear Tom Thibodeau has driven that me- message home. He is shooting them every time he's a chance, whether there's a couple feet beyond the arc, whether Nikola Vucevic was in his face, it didn't matter. Um, this is the part that shocks me. The guy is a freight train going downhill. Maybe I just didn't watch enough Bulls over the years to see it. Maybe I forgot because he was playing power forward and was just not really used 
as a screener with Anthony Edwards very much because that's Rudy Gobert's whole game. So they kind of had to reserve that for him. But the Knicks were going to that over and over and over again. Him and Jalen Brunson and him and Mikael Bridges, secondly, are developing really nice chemistry. And whether it was Towns catching on the roll, Brunson turning and finding someone else, or, or like quickly getting rid of the ball and like a third guy attacking because the entire Bulls team converged, the Knicks were feasting on that action. I think he had three different and ones on Vucevic in the first I don't know, six or seven minutes of the third quarter. He was incredible tonight. Uh, what what what'd you make of his performance? I mean, same thing you said. I you know he already has beaten his Knicks career high, um, and it, you know bested it within like a week of setting the previous one. You know, so pretty impressive stuff there. Um, you know, the forty six points like down the stretch, he just he was unguardable. I mean, every single time that he touched the ball, it was just like, okay, that's going in. The only time where that stop being the case was unfortunately once he took two really hard hits down the stretch of this game which continues to make me nervous i mean I, he's for as much as he's getting downhill and you know going freight train mode he's getting bumped a lot and not getting in my opinion i mean it it takes quite a bit to dig a guy that size off his feet and he's hitting the deck a lot and there was even a couple times in this game where he hit the deck after a layup and had to like rush to get back up to start running down the floor because like there was no foul call. And I don't know, it's, it's been a little weird. The, the, just the general vibe of officiating so far this season. And I know that that always kind of evens out as the season goes on, they try to call less early on in the season and then midway through, they kind of just give up and just start calling everything that they were calling previously again. And then in the playoffs, then things loosen up again and guys are allowed to just play through it, which I feel like is the way it should be. You know, I think that the regular season, you need to kind of protect these players a little more so that they're ready for the postseason. And we're already seeing so many injuries already this year. But anyway, that's a tangent for another day. Um, you know, I, I thought that he did a great job. You know, I thought that getting all the way to the rim, I mean, he was doing it with force. The only thing that that took him out a bit was he did get an and one call later on the game where he he got kind of knocked off balance as, as he was going in. Or sorry, that one was an and one. That one was just a shooting foul. But he, he got knocked off balance. He was driving in and then took a real hard hit to the the stanchion, like back first and uh, under the hoop. And it looked like he sort of – he didn't hit his head per se, but it looked like he kind of got whiplashed and definitely like immediately went to the ground holding his neck. Didn't seem super comfortable after that. And then bumped knees with Zach Levine later on in the, the – like I think two minutes later – and came up like really limping after that and then did stay in the game, but clearly was having a hard time even like setting an efficient screen for Jalen Brunson after that. So he was pretty yeah. much just out there as a shooting decoy from that point forward. Luckily, they were able to count on Brunson to kind of, you know, make those clutch shots down the stretch. Like he made two and a half shots down the stretch that could have won the Knicks this game. Um, but it, Towns' play is just, I mean, it's its amazing. He's, he's exactly as advertised, you know, if not better, because I think that now he's, and to your point, he's finally back in a situation where at least right now where Brunson is still sort of finding his way this season and for whatever reason is still kind of slumping. Cat uh, has been, I think, the undisputed number one off and number one option of this offense uh for the last five, six games, something like that, and is you know wearing it on his sleeve and really doing a great job. And I mean, his scoring average after this game has to be up somewhere around 27 points per game, something yeah. like that. I think it was like 24 and a half going into today. Um, he's doing it all on that end. And that's all you can really ask. And I think that he's, you know, he's not without his flaws on defense, you know, for as much as, uh, as, as much as he was toasting Vucevic, like he kind of ran into the same thing on the other side where Vucevic kind of had his way with him a few times and got deep post position on him and finished some fairly easy layups. And, you know, you can hold that against cat, I guess, if you want, but, the fact is the Knicks need someone to carry them on offense right now. And he's been that guy. He's, he's the guy that they can count on, like to, to make a three when they really need one to get the action started early in the game, to make tons of clutch shots down the stretch of pretty much every game lately. He's, he's doing everything that they wanted when they traded for him. So I, I've, I, it's hard to zero in on any of the, the negatives when the positives are shining so bright right now. Now he's, he's played, He's, he keeps playing good enough for them to win. And and I, I said it before, I'll say it again. Like like his motor relative to Julius Randle's is, is just 
like it, it, it's night and day and like not to like I feel bad crapping on Julius because he's not here and I know Timberwolves fans are crapping on him after he had a really bad game and they lost to the Blazers the other night so sorry for piling on Julius but man like like it is it's good to see for like whatever his flaws are on defense like it, it is it is very rarely lack of effort and, and lack of wanting it and it is so obvious that he's embracing being back home and like he desperately wants to do well for the city and like the aggression going downhill is so fun like him and og and Anobi both like the number of just ferocious dunks we've gotten from them like in the half court like obviously over the years we got rj in transition and Obi in transition i am not, and occasionally julius like i'm not really used to a knicks team getting like monster dunk after monster dunk in the half court and that is a lot of fun to see like like he he is just intent on punishing the rim and where he was like a little passive a little like well i'm the new guy here i don't want to step on jalen's toes early like it feels like uh, i'm sure credit to jalen brunson and a credit to everyone on this team like he is fully empowered and it's so fun to see like not just jalen but everyone when they run a screen and roll action with him like over and over again it feels like they are looking to get the ball back to cat like you see mikhail just like dragging out these plays and saying like all right i'm gonna bait the second defender into committing to me and then they're whipping it back to towns and he's either hitting a three or he's waiting for the big to close back to him pumping blowing by them og's doing the same thing in screening actions and it's a lot of fun to, to see, like, for whatever, like, obviously the Knicks have been second in the NBA in offensive efficiency so far. So there's not, like, a lot of question about the production. I heard the, the our friends over at the Hot Hand Theory podcast had a really good seg on it, just kind of arguing that some of the ways the Knicks are going about is unsustainable. I feel like the process on offense has been a lot better the last two games. But the Knicks are getting a ton of shots at the rim. They're getting a ton of good looks from three. They're mixing in both Mikhail and Jalen, like, kind of a deadly mid-range game, but... I, I think the shot chart has looked sterling. And even even early in this one, like they they were Jalen in particular was clanging a bunch of open threes. And Jalen now over his last four games is is I think four of twenty or, or five of twenty from three. Like obviously that's gonna get better. He's gonna shoot the ball better. Um we'll talk about it more in just a sec, but I, I don't really have any issues with the next process offensively. Defensively, there's some real questions. We'll talk about Jalen Brunson. We'll, we'll probably touch on the Knicks defense a little bit more. And, and, and another solid night for Mikhail Bridges. All that and more next here on Locked On Knicks. But first, we want to let you know about our good friends over at Mint Mobile. And with big wireless providers, what you see is never what you get. Somewhere between the store and your first month's bill, the price you thought you were paying magically skyrockets. Well, with Mint Mobile, you'll never have to worry about gotchas ever again. When Mint Mobile says $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan, they mean it. And you could say bye-bye to your overpriced wireless plans, jaw-dropping monthly bills, and unexpected overages. Mint Mobile is here to rescue you with premium wireless plans starting at $15 a month. All plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You use your own phone along with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts so you can ditch overpriced wireless with Mint Mobile's deal and get three months of premium wireless service for 15 bucks a month. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash LockedOnNBA. That's mintmobile.com slash LockedOnNBA. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash LockedOnNBA. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on first three-month plan only speed slower above 40 gigabytes on unlimited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. All right, Gavin, we're back in to do the housekeeping on this one. We've talked about the, the ending. We've talked about Cat. Now, all the rest. Um, <laughs> I guess, I, I don't know. I, I think we could probably, I know you were mentioning having concerns on the defense. I mean, where do you want to start with that, I guess, before, I mean, I feel like campaign deserves some credit for this one. Um, maybe Mikhail Bridges again for continuing to, be a little more inserted into the offense here, but um, you know, what, what was it defensively specifically that you want to touch on or else perhaps just go right into campaign. Cause I feel like we have touched on the defense a decent amount, probably about as much as I want to just that they were lazy and lackadaisical. 
Yeah, I think I think outside of that, which is, is is probably the bulk of it against a team like the Bulls. And to your point, Zach Levine out of body second quarter. Patrick Williams as well, who I, I thought like despite essentially not doing anything in the NBA, got a ninety million dollar contract um, this offseason. He looked really good in this game. He was hitting a bunch of crazy threes. You mentioned Vucevic. He he's been in his bag a little bit so far this year. Um, I kind of I kind of weirdly like this Bulls team. I don't know. They're they're kind of fun. Billy Donovan has them playing hard, playing smart. Um, but that's that's as far as I'll go complimenting Chicago. Um, I, I think the biggest thing I'm seeing still is like the Knicks perpetually overhelping. It has been kind of an issue the entire Tom Thibodeau era where they're they're just very keen on, on cutting off the paint, which has mostly led to great defenses. But they're giving up a lot of threes because like that that paint help is always so aggressive. And you'll, you'll see Mikhail Bridges like two feet in the paint and like Chicago just being like, all right, we're just going to like whip it to the wing, whip it to the corner and Bridges quite can't quite get back in time. OG got burned on that a couple times too. The worst offender was uh, Josh Hart on one play where, where Giddy was bringing up the right wing and whatever you want to say about Josh Giddy, the guy is a brilliant passer of the basketball and Zach Levine was open on the opposite wing. And maybe Josh Hart is thinking like, all right, I can, I can help there. Like as a kid, you're taught like, all right, if you're, if you're three passes away, quote unquote, like you, you can, you can set two feet in the paint and help um, against an NBA point guard like Josh Giddy. You're not three pass away. You're one pass away. Giddy just fired a laser cross court, easy three for Levine. Um, so that's an issue. I, I think sometimes gap integrity, I know that's more of a football term, but that's a little bit of an issue. And to me, that's just like a chemistry thing that'll come with time. Like there was a play for campaign who we're going about to praise. Um, like, like there was a pick and roll cat was in drop and Payne again was maybe was over helping like a little bit too much initially so Cat thought he was going to be there, and Cat relaxed, and then Levine just, like, burst through the two of them, and Cat just, like, you could hear him say, like, come on, because he thought Payne was going to be there, but Payne was like, Cat's right there, and that's one of those things that'll just come with time. So I, I think a lot of this is, is, like, on both ends of the floor, honestly, like, the offensive chemistry is coming along. I heard our friend Benji say this the other day on Nick's Film School, like, defensive chemistry is sometimes, like, something that's even more elusive, something that takes even longer to develop. So I, I think I think they will get there. For sure, but you you are just seeing like still a lot of miscommunications, and even like Mikhail and OG aren't really exempt from that. Like like they got shredded in, in a pick and roll one time. Um, I mentioned marking the wrong guys defensively in transition, so it's a lot of basic stuff. A lot of it is fixable. I'm still worried about Cat at the five, but again, if his offense is this good, maybe the Knicks can just outscore teams um, that aren't named the Boston Celtics. Even in the playoffs. That being said, I, I wanna I wanna talk about the bench. I wanna talk about campaign because the energy in this game completely flipped when when Jericho Sims and Deuce McBride checked in the third quarter like I I'll, like we mo- almost exclusively crapped on Sims on this podcast this year um, I thought for two games now is like brought good energy like a clear upgrade in rim protection relative to Carl Anthony Towns and then campaign was was just electric like like if you, if you want to pinpoint what has kept campaign in the NBA after he failed in his first run in the league like like it is his infectious enthusiasm and pace like he had two different steals where, where he was just like shooting in and playing gaps and maybe it's because he's a smaller dude and he played for murray state but when he's out there and you're having a comeback you feel like you're watching a mid-major about to pull off just a big time upset and i think that's why the Knicks crowd got so into it this campaign like like the guy is just like exhilarating to watch when he's on the court and your team is playing well and like the vibes were so good like I obviously they they put in Jalen and Hart down the stretch and that was the right decision. But I was like, you know, ride it out with campaign. He he was cooking. Yeah, it does really help. Like to your point, the just the energy. You know, I know that you know two points are only worth two points, three points are only worth three points. But how you deliver those sometimes really does help. And it was I forget what he cut the deficit to at the point that he did, but it was like. I think it might have been the cut at single digits. It was either like to nine or to 11 or something like that. Um, it, somewhere in that general range after they had been down by 20. But like there was still a lot of work to do. Yeah. And yet because of how he reacted when the Knicks came out, they made like two really quick buckets. One of them was a campaign three. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the dude just went bonkers. And that set the crowd off. That prompted an immediate timeout from Billy Donovan that had the Bulls on their heels. Like that sort of stuff, it's – it's kind of an intangible, you know, like it's, it's not something that you can really like say like a, hey, every player could just try to do this, you know, like every player could try to have that kind of energy, but you can't fake it, you know, and you just kind of need guys like that on your team because they pump everybody up. They, they let everybody know, you know, in their own special way, like, Hey, everything's going to be all right. Like whether it's the crowd or whether it's the, the teammates on the bench or whatever, like, 
him doing that is like, hey, you know, I'm I'm shooting well. And you know what? You guys saw it last year in the playoffs. Like if I could shoot well in a game and and, you know, get my buckets like you can, too. Like and and then, you know, we could all get our buckets here and potentially win this game. Like, you know, I'm a I'm a bench dude. Like I'm out here scoring on these guys. You could do it, too. You know, whatever. Um, I'm sure that in his head, he's not like, oh, I'm much worse than Jalen Brunson. Like, look at what I'm doing. But that's sort of the message. Like, you know, a guy comes out there and he and he's making it look so easy like that. You realize, oh, yeah, like if we all just tried as hard as this guy, then we could we could do this, too. Um, but, yeah, I, I love this play. Um, you know, the three point shot going down. Obviously, you know, we've already seen people complaining online earlier in the season about like, oh, he's too much of a chucker, blah, blah, blah. This is why you let him shoot, you know, like this is why, you know, because you're going to get games like this sometimes. You just got to hope that he has enough of a governor on that to turn it off. You know, like if he misses three, four in a row to stop, which we've already seen at least once or twice this year, not the case. If he thinks that he's got the green light and, you know, should keep shooting. Um, but yeah, this was this is the sort of spark public performance that you sign him for and why he's a really good value on a veteran's minimum, because I think that he's going to. He's going to give you more than a handful of these this year um, of really good games like that, that, that really raise your eyebrows and, and make you say, okay, like this is, this is really good. Um, I did want to uh, real quick before we, I guess, close on Mikhail Bridges, maybe I, I will just say with regard to what you were saying about the defense a minute ago, I did just have one last thought on that, which is I think a lot of these problems are going to start going away when they get pressure to chew it back. As yeah. long as he, comes back healthy because I do think that will finally give them the option of having a guy out there who at least on defense plays a little more like the style of big that Tibbs wants while not making you give up having cat out there on offense or defense really, because I still think they could have a functional defense if sort of both of them are in charge of shading towards the paint, but precious just kind of has more of the, the inclination to challenge the shots down there instead of cat. I think that'll work out well. And then obviously if, if you get Mitchell Robinson back and he's fully integrated with this team and, you know, it, it, depending on what report you read, it seems like either the Knicks are halfway towards getting rid of him already, or, you know, they're very much looking forward to having him back. But, you know, if it's the latter, a lot of these issues should hopefully get solved sooner than later with precious more so than Mitch sooner, because, you know, I think Mitch is probably not going to happen until January, but precious, hopefully we'll hear some good news in the next week or two that he might be gearing up towards his return from that hamstring strain. And I think that could go a long way towards solving these defensive issues. And he might end up closing a good amount of games as a result, um, which I'd be fine with. And, you know, then we obviously know the offense is about as good as it gets in the NBA right now. Um, so that that's not going to change, I don't think. So anyway, that was my final thoughts on the defense. But if we want to kind of bring this one home, I thought uh, Mikhail Bridges again – had a a pretty solid outing, all things considered. 20 points, six boards, five assists, uh, eight of 15 shooting overall, only one of four from three. You want to see that number go up, obviously. But the big one to me, we were just harping on this after the last game, or at least I was. I was finding a negative in a in that positive game with him. Uh, three of three from the free throw line. So he got there three times, which I think constitutes a third of his total attempts for the season going into this game. <laughs> so... Uh, I thought that was great. That was a, a huge, a huge thing for the Knicks is seeing him, you know, get to the free throw line. I don't think that he was attacking the rim quite as much still as I would want. And yet you'll take some of it. Um, I, I was encouraged by his game. He, he got up 15 shots again, which was third on the team, which I think is how it should be. You know, I think this that's the guy you, you paid all the picks for him to be is to be the tertiary scoring option and the guy that's going to be aggressive and, try to get some buckets when, you know, especially like early on in this game, like things weren't working quite as well for Brunson again, like in the early going, you know, you need a guy like that that can hopefully like stabilize things a little bit. I thought you did a pretty good job there along with cat, obviously, but uh, yeah, I thought it was, it was a solid game for Mikhail. Another, another good one, two in a row for him, I think right now. Yeah. I, I think if I'm not mistaken, all three of those free throws were just when he was fouled on, on a three. But you know what? That accounts for over 25% of his made free throws. I, I gave him one more than he had. He, he'd made eight in the season coming in this game, not nine. So you know what? Beggars beggars can't be choosers. I'll take it. And I, I did, again, like you want to see him getting to the rim. You, you need to see like more threes going and what he's at. He's under 29%. I think he's at like 28%. Am I 
preseason bowl prediction that he finished under 35 is is looking like concerningly on, on track so far. And like the only three he did hit was off of Sims, like dribble handoff um, in the corner. Like, again, like, like he's not even looking at above the break threes right now. And like when he drives, like he's not dri- driving to get all the way to the rim. He's driving to shoot the mid range, which to be fair, he's shooting mid range shots um, as well as most guys shoot layups right now. Like he's hovering, I think, Close to 60% for mid-range still. Felt like he went like four for five tonight, like including a couple of really tough ones. One where he got Vucevic on a switch, passed it up, and then got the ball back and then said, screw it, went right at him, hit like a one-legged fade. Like He's just automatic on that, so that's good. Six rebounds, five assists, one steal. Like He he actually he had a great defensive possession on Zach Levine that should have won the Knicks the game probably, but then Brunson like committed that kind of stupid foul. It wasn't really his fault. He was just chasing the ball. And like that was before Brunson had the last pass and then before the three point foul, but that was great defense. So overall, like small, but certain progress for Mikhail. a little worried that he played 43 minutes. I understood why Tibbs kept him out there for a long time with that group. And then you don't want to take him out at the, at the end. Um, he, he's the NBA's ultimate iron man, but the minutes are really piling up early. So I'm hoping the Knicks with, with these next few games looking really easy can rest them a little bit. I just wanted to finish up on on Jalen Brunson because we never like actually talked about him in in any kind of depth. Um, like he he looked good overall early. The one thing that was really weird um, was the Bulls were just giving him open threes and he didn't really make them pay. Like he had he had one where they gave him like ten seconds and he hit one to beat the shot clock, but missed two other ones that were just completely completely wide open. Finished three for nine for the game um, overall. Again, like really good pick and roll craft. With Carl Anthony Towns, I'm um, considering that he's playing on a bum ankle. Like it made sense that he didn't look that explosive, but him just cooking Patrick Williams down the stretch, like like he put down a masterclass in the final minute, right? Like the snatch back mid range two, then like an in and out, like between the legs crossover to be Patrick Williams for a lefty layup that should have won the game. We've said it a bunch of times. The last shot should have gone in. So I will I will give Jalen Brunson his time, but I'm I'm hoping that ankle doesn't linger for him. I'm hoping maybe they could give him one of those Nets games off just to buy him like a little bit more time to recover um, because I want to see explosive Jalen Brunson. I want to see the guy, like honestly, we saw this preseason where he looked faster than ever because the court was so open. He was getting to the rim. I don't feel like he's totally been that with any consistency this year, but if him and Kat can get to a point where they're having like, I don't know, like two out of four nights where they're both dropping 30, like I think the Knicks can hit like maybe an even scarier level offensively than they already have. Um, Really easy stretch coming up. So I, I think the Knicks have a chance to string some wins together here and, and kind of make this loss and an afterthought as disappointing as it was. I hope so too. And that starts with uh NBA cup game two this coming Friday against the nets and uh, at home. So hopefully, you know, able to take advantage of that and get a win against a team that, I mean, holds a very similar record to them at the moment. The nets are five and seven, but I think, uh, inarguably a team that they should be much like the bulls were tonight, you know, similar record, but not a team that I think should be beating the Knicks. So hopefully they don't, they don't take them lightly. And I don't think they will. If there's one thing that this Knicks team is really good about, it's rebounding from losses that shouldn't have been losses and coming out and putting their stamp on the next game. Uh, We've seen it many, many times, including this year, like after they dropped their two in a row for the first time in the OG era, they came out really responded well to that lose another game after that, respond really well after that. You know, they, they it's it's going well. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully they get back to 500 on Friday and then can get out of the week over 500 again and, and start a nice little winning trajectory. But we'll have you covered for all those and more. Uh, but until then, thank you all for listening, and we'll talk to you all soon. Peace out, everybody.